Good evening. Congratulations to the TEDx team, the Fearsome Foursome. Excited to be part of this uh, first TEDx here. Let's talk about robots. Specifically, let's talk about robots in place. So we all know a little something about robots, right? We know what they look like. We know what they're supposed to do. And many of us, myself included, learned about robots from science fiction, whether it's a movie or a TV show or a cartoon. There's good robots. And there's bad robots. This robot, this particular bad robot, was a pretty good governor. So the good robot versus bad robot debate is taken into our non-fiction world. The good robot versus bad ro robot debate is seen through two different lenses. One lens is it represents progress, the, the title of this conference here today. Efficiency, forward movement. The bad robot is, represents a machine that takes away good jobs, middle class jobs. The replacing worker debate is not a new one. In fact, it's a pretty old one. In the early 1800s, the English textile workers who would weave cotton by hand became enraged when they realized that the manufacturing owners were replacing them one by one with steam powered knitting machines and looms. So what did they do? They did what any knitting hammer wielding sewing person is they organized and they had midnight raids and they showed up and they smashed as many of these evil machines as they could. And since then, in the ensuing years, up till today, we're having these same debates. Whether it's in the auto industry, machines are slowly replacing humans. I don't see a human in that picture. And the rapid progress of technology at a mind-bendingly rate um, us to here. This is a homework assignment. Go to YouTube. Type in Boston Dynamics Big Dog. The stuff that you will see when you open a YouTube video is absolutely crazy amazing and far surpasses the imagination of any science fiction writers from as recently as 30 years ago. I remember in the late 1970s watching the first Star Wars movie uh, in a drive-in theater in the back seat of a station wagon uh, with my parents. And watching and thinking the, te the technology, the effects is crazy. Um, I wasn't necessarily scared by Darth Vader, but for months I had nightmares about the robots, the scene where the giant four-legged robot was uh, sort of coming into the battle. On the YouTube, the George Lucas robots in the Star Wars era have nothing on Big Dog. Gartner, Inc is a leading technology research firm. And they recently predicted by the year 2025 that one third of the jobs will be replaced by drones or robots. There are naysayers uh, to that, that um, hypothesis. Some will say the jobs won't be created, there will be the elimination of um, menial, task-oriented jobs, and they will be replaced by high-tech, um, higher-paying jobs.
This is an interesting graph. Since the, po the post-war economy, both productivity and jobs in tandem climbed northward at a steady rate until about 2011. And you can see productivity continues to climb. The employment numbers are declining on a trend line. I'm sure you've been through one of these before. I guess the question is that trend line as, as, as productivity climbs northward and jobs are moving southward, are things like this replacing people? I hope not because I'm not sure. I've been through something that looks like this umpteen times and I still can't figure out that the bread goes in last, not first. So I'm hoping that the baggers and the grocery store checkers uh, uh, win this. ATMs have been around for a long time, bank tellers, although analysts will tell you that um, there's a lot less bank tellers today than there were in years past. And with the advent of smartphones and transfer of money through the smartphones, the question is, Will ATMs be obsolete someday? The cognitive ability of software-driven robots have made their way into the surgery rooms, which begs the question, will there be surgeon-less surgeries in our near future? Uh, it looks to me like this robot here is doing more than the guy standing next to it. In the finance world, Computers and robots are crunching numbers and doing this and companies and, and investors in the high finance world are making big decisions with lots of money based on work that a computer or a robot has done. And I would venture to guess that somewhere on this campus, at some point here today, somebody was filling out one of these things. It was going to be probably corrected by this thing, which is a smart machine, kind of old technology. But now smart machines are able to correct essays and unstructured test, text. So in the knowledge space, in the manufacturing space, and in the number crunching space, machines and computers are slowly creeping into occupations that were formerly helped by human beings. What about robots in the private, uh, in, the serv in the service sector? And when I say service sector, I'm talking about restaurants. Now, in restaurants, the tools of the trade have been the same forever. A white, hot, burning flame, a furnace-like oven, a Minnesota cold-like walk-in refrigerator, and a really, really sharp knife. Please be kind to the chef. Right? Remember when this was high tech in the restaurant industry? Well, things have come a long way. In China, there's a restaurant creatively named Robot Restaurant, and the owner has. Um, employed, or I should say deployed, a few dozen robots who greet customers, prepare their food, and deliver their food. And in US dollars, the cost of one of his robots is about 31000 to $47,000. It's a lot of money. That is the question, that restaurants are faced with today here in the United States. Now, the profit margin in the restaurant industry is notoriously thin. So, stated differently, uh, for every dollar that is spent in a restaurant, the restaurant owner earns three pennies to a nickel. The drivers towards automation in most other industries up till now have been right, thin profit margins, increased competition or globalization in 
case. Increased labor costs, and for the restaurant industry, I'm going to talk about the things we're seeing here in California that are actually shifting the whole business model of the restaurant industry. And affordable robots. Now, $31,000 to $4,000 is not really affordable for a restaurant owner. But if the cost at the low end of a ro the, the low end cost of a robot is $31,000, take the debate on in many parts of the country, here in California as well, in some cities where there is a push for a $15 minimum wage. A $15 minimum wage in full-time work means $30,000 a year. So you can see this happens, and it very well could. The cost of employing a person versus the cost of purchasing a robot to do that person's work, that decision could be upon the restaurant owner very soon, just like it was to the manufacturer of textiles in early 1800 England. So the uh, robots are coming uh, and the collective workers sky is falling argument I think, uh, for many is um, here yet for the restaurant industry. This is how many workers in restaurants there are in California. 1.1 million. The people in our industry is what makes our industry so great. Meet Daniel. Daniel was born in Mexico um, and had a dream of coming to the United States. His first dream was to be a professional soccer player. That didn't work out. His second dream was to get into the culinary arts, be a chef. He's been cooking and preparing food for restaurant guests for close to 30 years. He's married, has two kids. This is his career. This is his passion. He's in management. And he's Hispanic. About of the cooks in California are Hispanic. Figure out how to do one of these better. I need a robot to help me with this. There's 53,000 cooks in California today. Meet competition. These are the robots that are more and more common in, in China. This is Brittany. She waits on tables. She started busing tables at 16 and was promoted to um, pickup delivery host. Um, and then when she turned 18, she was able to wait tables. This is not her career. She didn't aspire to be a server. But her mom used to be in the industry and said, what do you want to do? And she said, I want to be a stylist and I want to go to cosmetology. Her mom said, you ought to go work in a restaurant. You can earn a lot of money in tips and can help you put you through school. So Brittany was from going from point A to point B. And her job in the restaurant helped her in her new entrepreneurial endeavor as being a contract, independent contractor, stylist at a hair And her hair was paid for on waiting tables. This is Angelica. Angelica, same story. Doesn't plan on being in the restaurant industry for the rest of her life. In fact, she just graduated from college. Her older sister put herself through college by waiting on tables and suggested to Angelica you ought to try to get a job in a restaurant, earn some good money in tips, you put yourself through school. And Angelica has just started her as a graphic designer. She has a, a degree in graphic design. And the restaurant industry helped her achieve that goal. There's 223,000 servers in California today of the 1.1 million restaurant workers. If every restaurant in the state of California move to a tablet-based ordering system, that number would be 75,000. 
and this is what the restaurant would look like. It's happening now. I don't think every restaurant in California will do this, but you can, you can eliminate two-thirds of your server workforce if you move to a tablet-based system. If you're a restaurant and the employment costs are going up and you have a 3% profit margin, there's not a lot of room for error. A lot of restaurants are being forced into this position. Where's the robot? There's the robot. This is Brittany's and Angelica's competition. Meet Scott. Scott works at a fast food restaurant, or he started at a fast food restaurant. He now works at a, a fast casual restaurant. He got his first job when he was 17 years old at a, we call it quick service restaurants. The public knows them as fast food restaurants. But he got a job at a quick service fast food restaurant at 17 because he wanted to buy a car. This is Scott's brand new car that he was able to purchase by working at a restaurant. This is his first year, this year um, in a university, and he's going to continue working in the restaurant to earn money and put himself through school. There's 120,000 young workers in California who work in fast food, quick service um, dining establishments more than half of whom are in the age of, of 16 and 25. The vast majority of restaurant workers in the QSR segment are youth. In fact, one in three working adults at some point in their life worked in a restaurant. By a show of hands, how many people have worked in a restaurant? That's about right. The great thing about our industry is that we're, there's a low barrier of entry. If you need that first job, if you need that job experience, you can get from point A to point B in your life by waiting tables. Have a fulfilling, rewarding, well-paying career if you want to get into management and you want to get into culinary arts and prepare food. This is Scott's competition. More and more restaurants are adopting technology. Uh, in the QSR segment, they're adopting technology at a much quicker clip because, frankly, when guests and consumers want to go into a quick service restaurant, they're more interested in convenience. They want quality of food. They want to get in and out. And so it may work better for that segment of our industry. But beyond the food, restaurants more are becoming an integral part of 21st century life. 200 years ago, 70% of Americans lived on farms. Today, 82% of Americans live in cities. And as we're entering into the online purchasing world, where a lot of people are purchasing their retail goods online, stores in, in things like clothes and shoes and makeup and other items are dwindling slowly. And many cities um, and city planners and developers look to restaurants to create that sense of community, that third place where people come, not their home, not their work, but the place where they can go interact with other humans, where they can celebrate, where they can have a conversation with a server. This is the nightmare I'm having about robots today. And it's not a four-legged anymore. Sometimes people want to go to a restaurant just to get away from it all, to get away from the constant barrage of marketing. They don't want to be staring at it. They don't want to be marketed to. They want to have a white meal. They want to have a conversation with someone that's a human. Sometimes when you go into a restaurant, you're not in a great mood. You had a tough day. A robot can't smile and say something nice and make your day just a little better. 
a robot, I don't believe, the robot may have the dexterity to make a good gin and tonic, but the robot doesn't know when to tell a good joke or just listen. Our industry, the backbone of our industry, is the people. And I'm still, I don't know where I am, robot versus human in sectors. But my nightmare is I had a bad day. And I want to go be in an environment where there's people. And I, I'm hoping that somebody can say something nice or lift my spirits a little bit. This is what I'm expecting when I go into a restaurant. But my nightmare is robo-waitress. <laughs> Nothing replaces a kind word or the experience you get by going into a restaurant that has that vibe. And I will submit to you the technology I think has taken our society and our economy to great places. But in the restaurant industry, I will take Brittany over robo waitress any day of the week. Thank you.